This girl, still in her prime, trapped in chains on the ground, in less than three minutes, she would have been thrown down like this yellow cow. At that moment the villagers came up to her, asking if he had any last words to say, but his words were not taken seriously by the others. Then the girl was about to be thrown into the yellow river. Luckily, the girl's brother came along. He saved the girl. Then he took the girl with him on his way out. But she couldn't escape the villagers. The girl's face was filled with despair. In the nick of time, the girl cut the suspension bridge. Everyone fell into the yellow river. Luckily, the girl was washed up on the shore. She was saved by a Tibetan Kalsang. The girl treasures her present. She has become part of a loving family because she has a Kalsang who taught her how to ride a horse and a very kind grandmother Kalsang. The girl is very happy here. One day they were out hunting. They rescued two foreigners from a snowbank. The young man's name was Ada and the older one was James. They were scientists on an expedition. When Ida accidentally fired a shot, the avalanche buried the two men. But due to local custom, the two men would have brought about the destruction of the area. So the team leader decides to have them execute but at this critical moment, a message was sent. That's when they were spared. James was then sent back to the border, and Ada stayed here to recover. James gave Gethin a lighter. He gave him a lighter in return. When they got back, Gershon gave the lighter to the leader of the group. The leader had a daughter called Ning. Ning loved men who were as brave as Gershon. Then Ning gave the lighter back to Gesang. She said she wanted to go away with him, but Gesang didn't dare to do that. He knew very well the difference between himself and Ning. Time passed quickly. Ada's body had fully recovered. He said goodbye to his Tibetan friends. He left for his homeland, but the next time they met, they became enemies. Chloe was about to go down to the river for a cold shower, but she was pulled back by Gesang behind her. When she got to the shore, she found that she had no clothes on. Chloe cried out in anger at Kalsang. It turns out that Tibetans are only allowed to take a bath at certain times. They can only go down to the river to bathe. If they don't bathe in the river at the specified time, then the chief would punish her. Then Kalsang took her to the gods to repent. But Chloe is not considered a Tibetan. I'm sure the spirits will forgive Chloe. That day, Chloe's brother came to Kalsang. He asked if he could bring her back. On hearing this news, Kalsang rode off on his horse. Here, Chloe was herding cattle in the grassland. The sky suddenly started to rain heavily. She fell into the swamp as her body sank deeper and deeper. She was desperate. Luckily, Kelsang came straight over, seeing Kagome about to fall in. Gethin jumped on her, but there was a rope for her to grab onto. Then he pulled her out little by little. In the end, she passed out in Gethin's arms. After this incident, the relationship between the two of them has grown, but she still had to follow her brother out of here. After saying a brief goodbye to her grandmother, she was ready to leave the Tibetan village. In the distance, Kelsang's eyes were filled with sadness. Not long after she left, Kelsang got on his horse and rode after her, but he found out that Chloe hadn't left at all. She was riding towards Kelsang on her horse. The two of them embraced each other, just like the horse next to him. At that moment Kelsang felt a group of people. There was a group of people coming towards him. When he looked closely, it was James and the others. Gesang was happy and ready to greet them. Instead, he was waiting for a cannon. The gringo in front of him, Jiang Xianing's clothes ripped open, ready to draw out more people by humiliating the girl. Under the attack of the cannon, the Tibetans are as weak as ants. Even the bull next to him couldn't stand it. He rushed straight up and took one of the enemies with him. That's when Ning took the cannonball in his hand. He decided to die with the enemy with his life. The moment the shells made contact, everyone next to him was reduced to ashes. And their boss, James and Ada, who had been saved by the Tibetans. Now they are carrying the cannon and invading the Tibetans. The spears in the hands of the Tibetans. How could they possibly defeat the cannons? At James' command, thousands of Tibetans were bombarded with artillery fire. Within minutes they had all fallen, and Ada was very much against James' approach, because he had lived here before. He knew the kindness and simplicity of the Tibetan people, but he couldn't help it, because everyone listened to James. Finally James came to the chief. They wanted him to surrender, and to give the army food. But the chief said, we need food for the winter. We have more to feed the dogs. There's no more for you. James saw that he wouldn't give in, so he offered the chief to be second in command of the army. The patriarch said we are 56 people. This is our own family business. It's not for you to tell us what to do. Seeing that he would not surrender voluntarily, James launched an even fiercer attack. With relentless artillery fire, only Kalsang was left to hold his last position, and Chloe was accidentally shot and fell into Kalsang's arms. James came to the rescue of Kalsang and held out his hypocritical hands. If you come to me, you'll be second in command, but he didn't see the gasoline at his feet. Then Gershon pulled out the lighter James had given him, and threw it down. In an instant everyone was engulfed in a sea of fire. At that moment Ada understood, this is a people who will not be subjugated. And that was the end of the film. To this day, among the Tibetan people, there is still a widespread tradition of singing the praises of the heroes who fought in the battle of giants. It expresses the feelings of the Tibetan people. One of the songs goes like this, the waves of the Nianmeng River roll on and on, can't stop the people of giants from hating each other, the waters of the Yarlung Tsongpo River, can't wash away the grievances of the Tibetan people. 